Hello and welcome to the third episode of Big Rig Banter, a show about all things commercial driving and transportation related. I'm your co-host, Connor Smith. And I'm your co-host, Troy Diffenderfer. The date is May 3rd, 2017. This is Big Rig Banter. Whether you're hitting the road or kicking back in the cab, it's time to take a load off with Big Rig Banter. Powered by AllTruckJobs.com, your source for finding the trucking jobs drivers really want. Get ready to shift into gear and let the conversations roll. All right, welcome, welcome, listeners. We are back for a third episode of Big Rig Banter. Connor, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Troy. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. So what do we have on the agenda we're going to cover some news topics. We know there's a big merger that recently happened that, if, unless you lived under a rock, that you probably already know about, but we're going to hit on that once again. And our main topic this month is going to be the three Ps, and we're talking about planning, personalizing, and profiting. And finally, when we finish things off, we're going to hit on some fun topics. Connor recently wrote a blog on wild trucking terms, so I know you're excited to get into that, Connor. Oh yeah, that's going to be a fun one. Wild trucking terms. Going to take you on a little uh, safari of lingo and so on. But before we get to all that, let's get into some news topics. All right, Connor, it's time to hit the news. And I know we had some big trucking news that came on our radar last month. Why don't you tell our listeners about that? That's right, Troy. So one of the uh, bigger topics in the trucking world recently is the Swift and Knight merger. Um, Essentially what's gone on here is two of the biggest North American trucking companies have merged together to create a giant in the industry. The merged firm will now be known as Knight Swift and plans to have a holding company structure while maintaining distinct brands. Um, In terms of stocks, Each Swift share will convert to 0.72 shares of the merged company, with each Knight share being swapped for one Knight Swift share. Last year, the two companies earned about $5.1 billion in total revenue and $416 million in adjusted operating income. The merged companies plan to achieve $15 million in cost saving synergies and pre-tax revenue in the second half of 2017 and up to $150 million in 2019. And we realize there may be some mixed emotions over what this means for the industry and for drivers in particular. So if you'd like, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook or at our Twitter at All Truck Jobs USA and just let us know your thoughts and we'll all be working through this together and figuring out what it means. We'll be sure to keep you updated on that story as well as other stories coming up. And in other news, a recent article published to Trucks.com reported that 40% of trucking companies are using mobile-friendly applications and screening processes to make onboarding new hires a better experience for everyone. The use of social media is helping to attract younger truckers to the industry, with 55% of companies employing tactics like driver appreciation events, while 36% advertise flexible work arrangements. Really, this is an attempt to recruit and retain millennial drivers by finding creative ways to display a company's benefits, like more flexibility, time off, and other options that can support a healthy work-life balance. Yeah, that's right. You know, um, for this generation in particular, it's really, in a sense, kind of shattering the stigma of being a truck driver. You know, so many millennials kind of have this uh, the stereotype of what it means to be a commercial driver in their heads, and... Uh, they really just don't see how they can excel in the field. And so I think it's a lot about trying to get them more comfortable with the idea of becoming a driver and, uh, you know, all of the opportunities you can have with this profession. It's it's really not just, you know, driving on the highway 24-7, even though, you know, interstate transportation is a huge part of it. There's a whole bunch of different license types and specialties that you can kind of take advantage of and once you can you can display that with things like social media, I think you're going to have a better chance at uh, getting millennials really on board and recruited and especially retained. So, And once again, if you've seen some great social media practices or have suggestions of what companies should do in order to retain these millennial drivers and veteran drivers for that matter, reach out to us on Facebook or Twitter. 
But now, Connor, I know this is one of your favorite news topics to come across our desk in the recent weeks, and we're talking about drones and trucks. That's right. Drones, they are a huge technology that is just kind of, it's it's disrupting the transportation industry mm-hmm. at the same time that it's adding a lot of new features and a um, an interesting take on, on how we can get products to different places. But... Um, Yeah, you know, it is no secret that the rise of e-commerce has caused a drastic shift in the way people buy and receive goods. And with so many e-retailers or e-tailers featuring free shipping and other expedited transportation, uh, the amount of deliveries has greatly increased. So now one of the more recent methods being considered for the volume of e-commerce products is the use of drones. Recently, a company called Workhorse Group is actually developing an electric drone system to work in tandem with electric vehicles, delivering packages from a truck itself rather than making multiple trips to warehouses. Um, Though it's expected to catch on slowly, the company hopes that this unique approach will eventually become part of the mainstream model for package delivery. It's important to note also that the use of these drones is a practical model. It wouldn't really work for packages beyond 10 pounds, But this could still be great for rural areas where trucks have difficulty in getting back certain roads or reaching uh, areas without a lot of infrastructure. I know we've talked before about, you know, the lack of sound bridges and roads. Mm -hmm. So, you know, drones might be one solution, more or less a band-aid to fixing infrastructure itself. But in the meanwhile, it could be good just to fly some uh, smaller packages to to people's houses that way. So that could be cool. And this is really kind of... um, hinting on the what's called the uberization of trucking and we actually have a a blog post on our website that talks about this how amazon is entering the transportation industry and all of that good stuff so you can check that out there'll be a link in the description below all right folks it's time to get to our main topic and connor i have a pop quiz for you okay what are the three p's of trucking Ooh, yeah i know this one it's uh possums Police and pavement, right? That is completely incorrect, actually. (sighs) The three P's of trucking, which we're going to talk about on our main segment today, is planning, personalizing, and profiting. Oh, right. You said that in the intro. That is true. Ah. But let's start with planning, Connor. I know we talked about in our first episode the types of CDLs. So if you do want a more in-depth look at the different types of CDLs, go back and listen to that or take a look at our blog. Uh, We did a game shows type of blog called Which Type of CDL is Right for You? But, you know, before you kind of start your trucking career, it's important to know what kind of trucker you want to be. So, Connor, why don't you tell us about what options are available? That's right. And so to start, you have your CDL license class A, B, or C. And those are just going to allow you to haul different vehicle weights as well as um, the type of vehicle, whether it's a, a school bus or a tanker. And that goes along with the type of endorsements you're going to get, too. Those are basically just extra skills that uh, can be added to your license, which give you greater job opportunities. Really, it'll just help you to narrow the scope of the type of jobs you're going to be seeking out. So it helps with the planning process just to make it a little more streamlined overall. And next, we're going to look at what makes a good trucking company. And these are things like the culture and the environment of the trucking company, as well as if they provide education. If you don't have any education yet, there are some companies that will actually pay for your education in hopes that you'll pass your CDL test and then become a trucker with their company. And you also want to make sure that they're okay with your lifestyle. I know many of you have families and friends at home, and that's important too. And I know, Connor, you're going to talk a little bit more about what it's like balancing that lifestyle and schedule while you're on the road. That's right. You know, being a trucker, I'm not personally, but it involves long hours on the road and you're frequently away from your family in new environments and uh, locations across the country. So, you know, that can uh, that can affect the way that you interact with your family and the frequency you get to communicate with them. So really... When you're planning your career as a trucker, it's good to think about that that work-life balance and try to strike a good, happy medium with uh, people in your life and your professional aspirations. So it is good to you know monitor the time you're spending on the road versus the time that you'll have to uh, kind of unwind at home. And 
really what that comes down to a lot of the time is just keeping communication open and making mm-hmm. sure that everyone else knows, you know, when you'll be back so they can start planning things around, you know, your your home time and your rest time and all of that. Luckily, you know, with uh, our ever expanding array of technologies, FaceTime and things like Skype are really easy ways to stay in touch with family when you're on the road. And, you know, it is also, like you were mentioning, Troy, it's a lot about the working with the trucking company to find a schedule that works for them and you and your family. So we'd love to hear from you guys if you have any advice or special techniques you use to stay in contact with friends and loved ones. Uh, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook or Twitter. All right, and now we're hitting that second P in our three Ps, and that is personalizing. And we're talking about kind of customizing your vehicle, and the first thing you want to think about is whether or not you're going to own, rent, or drive a company vehicle. And that's a big thing as you get into the trucking industry. There's a variety of different ways you can go about it. Um, You probably won't be able to make any drastic modifications if you're just being loaned the truck. But finding ways to feel at home in your cab is really important. We know it's going to be your home away from home, and it's something you really want to think about. If you're just starting out, it may not make sense to buy your rig outright unless you're positive that this is a career for you. We know it's a big kind of choice to make, but so it's always good to kind of ease into the process and renting or driving a company truck might be the best option. And so, of course, it's necessary to inspect your vehicle regardless of whether or not you're the owner. And I actually recently wrote a blog that covers kind of the pre-inspection process and that covers everything from checking the brakes to checking the tire pressures. But once you do that, it's time to start making your rig your home away from home. And Connor, I know you have some tips on how to do that. Just a few, yeah. So, like you said, it's the home away from home. But you don't want to go overboard necessarily, and you want to work within, uh, you know, being able to maintain the right amount of safety and organization in your rig. But, um, you know, I would say above a lot of other concerns in your rig, it's good to make sure that your bed and your sleeping quarters are all in order because getting rest on the road is uh, extremely important. And after a long day of hauling, the best you can do is just get some quality sleep. So... Um, that's a good place to start is just making sure you have a comfortable place to rest up for the night. Um, but otherwise, ideally, you might want to find ways to, you know, prepare food, whether it's a, a cup of tea, a hot meal or other snacks. So hopefully you can run small appliances in your rig, like a microwave or maybe, you know, an electric kettle. Obviously, no cooking with gas or open countertops. That is <laughs> not advised inside of uh, cabins. But, you know, just try to make the space as enjoyable as possible while maintaining the right amount of safety and efficiency, you know, and and personalize it. You could get one of those little hula girls on the dash, just kind of like wiggling back and forth. That's, (laughs) you know, everybody needs one of those, at least in some capacity. But yeah, of course, you're going to want to have your emergency supplies on hand and accessible. So things like emergency blankets, flares, additional non-perishable food items, perhaps extra flashlights and batteries a radio and uh, just make sure that you know you don't over decorate things so that it's cluttered so you can have access to these items in case of an emergency but yeah it's about making yourself feel comfortable and uh, having some environment you're going to want to spend long periods of time in while being able to do your job efficiently and uh, stay healthy as well Yeah, and you know, another way to do that is to bring a companion, and I don't just mean humans. Uh, I'm a huge fan of those furry creatures, Connor, and uh, unless you're a team driver, trucking is a pretty solitary profession, so you may want to get a pet to help out with that. Again, you should always check with your company whether or not they allow pets on the rig, but some will have weight limits or some will only allow dogs onto the rig, so it's always a good idea to check that out and Again, I covered that in another blog that can be found at the link below, or you can check it out on alltruckjobs.com slash blogs. So what are some things to maybe consider if you're bringing a pet on the road? Um, You really want to give them space. Uh, You want to make sure to make more stops than usual. You want to get the, you want to allow your furry friend to stretch their legs. I know it can be pretty cramped in the cabin at some point, and it's always a good idea to bring food and water for them as well. I know 
they can get cramped and one of the biggest things that maybe people don't think about is kind of training your furry friend to stay in one area. Uh, many will put up barriers when it comes to their brake pedals or the back of the rig to kind of train them to stay in one place and that's always a good idea because a, a creature roaming around might be a hazard to your driving. So that's always a good idea to make sure that they are staying put. Very good. And now it's time to get on to our third P, and that is profiting. And we're talking about how to really excel in your career financially. And I know, Connor, you talked about some of the career goals that many truckers want to have as they get on the road. Sure, yeah. So if nothing else, you know, start with small goals for yourself. Like maybe it'll be just to avoid receiving uh, any violations in the first six months. I mean, ideally ever, but... Just make small incremental goals that you can achieve just so that you'll be motivated and you'll want to maintain um, your standards for the job and for your career as a whole. Um, you know, maybe you want to make it to a certain state by some point in the year or you want to log so many miles at a certain point. So it's just essentially about uh, keeping track of how you're progressing and maybe that just means kind of writing all of your goals down in a journal or something like that and then logging them uh, besides, you know, your official company logs and things like that. Just kind of finding ways to keep yourself motivated to continue your driving excellence. Um, yeah, and speaking of staying motivated, it's always a good idea to kind of keep your mental health in check. That's a huge aspect of trucking that many truckers will kind of forget to recognize and that's always a major issue for many truckers it's no secret that these long hours on the road can become monotonous and with that can come the added risk of depression and some of these other underdiagnosed mental illnesses as a trucker you may feel isolated at a time and again that's why we recommend bringing a companion or staying in touch with family as much as you can so it's important to realize when you may be experiencing any negative thoughts and tendencies and you need to find ways to deal with them safely and in a healthy way. Really mental health is just as important as staying physically healthy on the road and the two are closely related. Finding time to get moderate exercise and staying fit will also contribute to your mental health. I know many truckers that we have talked to will continue to stay fit on the road and there's even uh, great stories out there that you can read about truckers that have actually lost weight or got more fit on the road. Yeah, you know, and uh, if you or someone you know who's in the trucking industry is suffering from depression, don't ever hesitate to seek the help that you need or uh, provide, you know, support to that person. The, you know, the social stigma around mental health is slowly lifting, luckily. So, you know, there are uh, lots of online uh, resources and support lines for people suffering from depression or maybe uh, having suicidal thoughts or anything like that. So um, it's getting easier to reach out and help people in this way. So we have uh, also included some links in the description that you guys can check out if uh, those resources may be of some value to you. But um, moving on then to the next and final aspect of our um, profiting section here is your retirement plan. You know, it's never too late to start saving, but the sooner you do, the better. And while many assume that saving later in life is a hopeless effort, creating a budget and putting away savings can actually lighten the load when it comes to retirement overall. You know, figure out a monthly amount that you would like to save and try to stick to that as closely as possible. It's a good idea to cut costs when you can, of course. And small things such as packing lunches and, you know, limiting the amount of cash you choose to spend each month can just be put toward your retirement instead. Because when you're not working anymore and you have all this new free time and you have all of this free time, it'll be nice to have a little extra money around, uh, especially if you need to pay for any medical bills, any other sorts of things that you might want to do in your older golden years. So... Like I said, it's never too early to start saving, and the more you save earlier on, uh, the more you'll have and the less you'll have to really work as uh, you get older here. It's very important. All right, and those are the three Ps, and we hope we provided a stellar guide on planning, personalizing, and profiting, and we will be right back after this break. 
wherever the job takes you. Big Rig Banter is here to bring you the latest in industry topics, trends, and more. Stay tuned after this short break. All right, so thanks for sticking around to the end of the show here. It's now time for our fun topics section. And um, Troy gave me a quiz earlier in the show trying to figure out what the three Ps were. So now it is his time to answer my questions. And uh, today's quiz is on the wild words of trucking, the convoy creatures of the industry. Uh, For any of you who have been in the industry a long time, you've probably heard these words through the CB radio. Um, And they're referring to different things in the industry, but they all have animal names. So it's not immediately obvious what they are. So we're going to kind of just go down the list here, and you can check out the full blog on our website, alltruckjobs.com. So first off, Troy, what do you think an anteater is in terms of trucking? Mm, That's a tough one. I'm going to say an anteater is the nozzle on the gas pump because it looks like an anteater to me. That's a pretty good guess. Uh, However, it's actually referring to the Kenworth T600 truck um, named for its sloped hood. It was one of the first trucks to be designed as a more aerodynamic, so it definitely stood out when it hit the road in 1984. But you'll see them now on the road almost everywhere. It just has that extended hood, uh, kind of looks like the the nose of an anteater. Okay, 0 for 1. All right, next up, alligators. What could that possibly be referring to? Oh, I know. This is, you know, sometimes them truckers get a tire blown out, and you see that burnt rubber and the... Loose rubber on the side of the road. I think that's what it is, right? Yeah, that's actually completely right. Um, it's just referring to those shredded pieces of rubber of tires. They have the grooves in them, so they look like alligator scales, like something's uh, trying to cross the road. Okay. And uh, they say, you know, you'll want to watch out so you uh, don't get bitten by an alligator. If they jump up and uh, hit your rig or something, it can damage hoses, belts, you know, fuel crossover lines, and other vehicles too. Mm-hmm. So. If you hear that on your radio, just be sure to look out for those and not to uh, try to run over the alligators. Okay, next term is bobtail. Hmm, that is a tough one. I'm going to guess a bobtail is another word for a smaller rig. That's almost right. Yeah, it's just referring to a tractor when uh, the trailer is not attached. So it, it just has, you know, the stubby look at the end of the vehicle as though, uh, you know, it's like a bobtail cat or something. Like, okay. it's it has yet to be hitched up. So that's what that's referring to. Pretty close, though. Um, next, donkey. If somebody says, there's a bear on your donkey, what do you think that's talking uh, about? I know. This is... I've had a lot of experience with this one. This is uh, the popo or the police or the fuzz, the red and white. That is it. Yeah, I uh, was pretty sure that's what the – it's when the police are uh, riding your rig. You always want to be cautious when uh, any police are around, any police vehicles. So it's always a good idea to kind of stay vigilant for those, and hopefully your fellow truckers will help you out and so you can spot those speed traps and stuff like that. You know, the, you'll probably hear there's a bear on your donkey. It means there's a there's a cop on your ass. So Okay. Okay, next one, dragonfly. What is a dragonfly in terms of trucking? Uh, that's a tough one. I'm going to guess a dragonfly is just the back half of your rig. That's my best guess. Uh, not quite. It is a it refers to a truck that has a uh, no horsepower. So, you know, a nimble uh, delivery kind of truck with, you know, the trailer attached type of thing. Uh, Just trucks that are low in uh, horsepower. So if you hear somebody say there's a dragonfly up ahead, it basically just means there's a smaller truck that's trying to make it up a hill that doesn't have a lot of horsepower. They're quick and nimble, except when it comes to heavy lifting. So that's the thought with that one. It's like the Prius or the Geo of the trucking industry. Yeah, basically. Okay, so what do you think then this next term is referring to? Mud duck. Mud duck. That was my nickname back in middle school, actually. So you should but, uh, know all about this one then. Yeah, that, uh, I'm going to say that is just a rig that's stuck in the mud. That almost sounds like it could be right, uh, but actually it's referring to when your CB radio has a poor 
signal or connection. It's just, it's called a mud duck. It's hard to hear you. So, you know, if uh, somebody says that, you're going to want to troubleshoot your uh, radio and see how you can make your communication more open and efficient. It's uh, very important. So finally, uh, our last term is pigtail. Hmm. Oh, I know this one. A pigtail is that little electrical curly cue kind of. It looks like a pigtail. Uh, connects your the electricity from your rig to your cab. Yep, that's it, actually. Good job. Nailed it. Um, yep, it's just that, that little cable, making sure your brake lights are working and uh, you have the proper power. All right, so that was our Convoy Creatures segment. And again, if you want to see the uh, entire list, head over to alltruckjobs.com on our blog. And you can check that out. All right, and for our final topic, things are going to get a little weird around here. Connor and I are going to strand ourselves on a desert island in our rigs. And we're going to assume that we both have food and water, but we have to pick two of the following items. And the items we have to choose from are the air condition, the radio, our favorite on-the-road snack, a passenger, or a favorite book. And uh, Connor, I'm going to let you kick things off. What two items would you choose to bring with you? Hmm. So we already have food and water, right? That's That's, a given. That's correct. Okay. So at that rate, you know, if we're stranded in the rig, or I guess we can we can leave the rig, right? We can venture out into the island eventually. That's true. Um, I'm gonna say I'd probably pick my favorite book, which my favorite book in that scenario would be a survival guide or something like that. All right, thinking critically here. Yeah, it's how I do, but uh. You know, get a survival guide and just get uh, enough information in your hands to uh, make an effective shelter or, you know, learn how to hunt food or or trap food if you don't know on if you don't exactly know the techniques involved, Mm -hmm. given the environment. And, you know, it can uh, you can quickly become delirious. So having some written information is good. So for my second uh, choice here, I would probably need to bring uh, another passenger, actually, somebody who... uh, was physically fit enough to help build a shelter and to hunt animals and to, uh, you know, fish or whatever we need to do. So not quite sure who that would be. I think you're describing me to a T right now, Connor. Oh. Physically fit, ability to hunt and fish, good looking. I mean, well, nobody said pack- that, but the, the total package. Okay, okay, you're in. You're hired. So, yeah, I mean, I guess that would just involve adding a few footnotes to my favorite book on uh, how to cook human meat then. Okay. But uh, those are my choices. All right. I'm going to keep it pretty similar, but I'm going to choose a radio for my first. uh, I think I'd be able to figure out a way of communication to any passing ships or planes, hopefully, via the radio. And I'd also want to listen to some music to pass the time. But uh, for my second one, I think I would also bring you, Connor. We spend so much time together in the podcast room that we've come pretty close over these last few episodes. It almost feels like a desert island rig right now. That is true. So I think I would bring you along. I think we'd put our heads together and figure out a way to get off the island, and we'd be able to pass the time together, which would be pretty awesome. Sounds good to me, and hopefully we never encounter that real situation, but I'd say we'd be pretty prepared given our limited knowledge. I agree. But uh, if you have any other ideas on how you'd spend your time on a desert island in your rig, truckers, we want to hear from you at Facebook or at All Truck Jobs USA on Twitter, or feel free to leave us a comment on this website. And uh, that's all we have. Connor, why don't you uh, take us out? Yep. Thanks again for listening, everybody. This has been the third episode of Big Rig Banter. And next time, we're going to be covering the mind and body roadmap, giving you tips on how to stay healthy and fit on the road, both physically and mentally. So stay tuned for that and uh, join us next time. This has been Big Rig Banter. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Big Rig Banter. For your next job, check out alltruckjobs.com, the premier online source for finding the best driver jobs in the country. Browse hundreds of positions by freight or driver type to get back on the road with confidence. Click subscribe to keep the conversations coming. Until next time on Big Rig Banter.